probably should have thought a little bit about what I'm going to say. This could turn out really good or really bad. Hi everyone, welcome back to What's Sewing On. Today I am going to be making my own cape. I am so excited for this video. I actually showed the fabric and I hinted at it. Actually, no, I full on told you about it in my fabric haul video that I did a few weeks ago. So I'm actually going to do it today because it is basically fall. It's getting cold and I need a freaking cape. So it's green, it's wool, it's kind of canvassy. I don't know what it's going to be like to work with because the edges are already very frayed. I think it's supposed to be like that. I don't know if it's a tablecloth or if it was scrap material. I really can't remember what it was when I bought it. And it's already been washed, so there's no tag on it. But it's thick, it's cozy, I'm really excited. The color is beautiful and I recently found the lining that I want to use as well. I don't know what kind of material it is. It's bright green, it's shiny, so. Raise the doorbell. Am I supposed to answer it? Recently, I found the lining of it. Again, I don't know what this fabric is either. It's shiny and thin, and it feels like what lining is supposed to be. And it's bright green, so it's a bit of a contrast of color. And there's also snowflakes on it. My other cape is one of the ones that just kind of like goes over your arms. So I want to make this one with the like arm slits in the front so you know I can go like this. I think I'm going to do a double weld kind of like pocket. Double weld? Double weld? Welted? Weld? Rolling. What is the word? Weld. I think it's weld. I'm going to do like a double weld pocket but obviously a slit not a pocket. I have actually done a double weld pocket. A single one in my very first video when I made the romper, dog bandana, and shorts combo. There was one back pocket that was weld and it turned out pretty good. So I'm not too intimidated by doing that. I think I got it in the bag. Obviously it's just going to be a lot longer than that one. I also want to make a secret pocket in the front flap because secret pockets are cool. So the reason I'm drafting my own is because I haven't been able to find the pattern that I'm looking for. I've looked online, I've looked at different thrift stores and that sort of thing, and I haven't really found exactly what I want. So I'm going to make it up myself. This could turn out really bad or really good. We'll just have to see. The materials that you'll need is your two fabrics, so for your lining and your outer shell. You'll also need, if you're drafting your own, some paper. This is my pattern paper. It's, don't tell many people, but it's I get it at Ikea. Uh, this whole roll, plus a lot more, because I've used it a bunch, is $5.99. So you can't really go wrong. Obviously there's never an issue with the length. Uh, the width sometimes is a bit small, but for the most part, it's not that big of a deal. And if you do print off your own PDF versions of patterns, you have to tape those together anyways. So me taping these together isn't a big deal. You'll also need a pencil, eraser, you'll need some rulers, you'll need a measuring tape, your fabric scissors, pins, sewing machine, needle, thread, yada yada yada. Yeah. So I'm gonna go show you guys the fabric and get started. Wish me luck. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this video. It was such an easy, I'm just kidding. I'll go and start now. Now I'm going to show you the measurements I'm using. If you do have a pattern, you can just skip this step and move on. If you're following, hopefully this is clear for you. If not, leave me a comment. I'll try to answer as quickly and as clearly as I can. So what you'll need is a notebook and pencil and you'll need your measuring tape as well. So the first measurement you'll need is your bust. So for the two front panels, since they're going to be separated, you're just basically only going to have to draft one and then you cut two of those. For the front two panels, you need your bust measurement and you take that number and divide it in half. Then take that number and divide it in half again. So my bust measurement for half is nine inches. I like my button pockets to be about two inches. So since nine basically comes to the center, 
I would move in about a half inch. So that would give me eight and a half. And I would add one and a half to that number. So it will be 10. I also want to add in my seam allowance for both sides. So usually five eighths for this side. And I'll probably give just a one inch on this side just because I want to make sure that I do have extra fabric. And if I need to cut it off, I can cut it off and it's not that big of a deal. So I would write down 12 inches for the width of the front panel. So for the back panel, basically all you need to do is take your bust measurement and divide it in half. That will be the width of your back panel. But because I want to cut it on the fold, if I can, it's going to be nine inches wide. I'm also going to make them kind of widen out at the bottom. So I don't have to, again, worry about any type of hip measurement. Next measurement you need is awkwardly your shoulder blade to just under your collarbone and write that down. The next number you'll need is the length for your arm. So basically just go where your shoulder starts and then you would go all the way down. I like mine to be really long and I want it past my hand fully extended. And I would probably go about an inch or so lower, if not more, just to make sure that it's a lot longer than I would like. So that would probably be 34, 35 inches, depending on how much fabric I have. So I would write that number down. Yes, I have really long arms. My dad likes to joke I can scratch my knees without bending. But guess what? I have to bend still. Next measurement you will need is the length you want the full cape. So basically, again, you would go the top of your shoulder, extend all the way down. I would like, in a perfect world, I'll have enough fabric for it to go past my knee, which would be about 42 inches. Don't know if I'm gonna have that much fabric, but if I can get anywhere close to that, I'll be happy with that. So as you can see, the arm and the length of the cape are going to be two different lengths. If you want to make them the same length, go right ahead. I'm going to actually draw kind of a swoop curve, but they're going to be pretty similar, I'm assuming. So that's all that measurements I'm going to take. Um, if you want to just draw this out first, make a mock-up with some bed sheets or something like that. I highly suggest that. I'm crazy. I don't take my own advice and rarely make mock-ups and just kind of wing it. So I'm just gonna start drawing out this pattern and we'll see what happens. I'm sorry. <laughs> Silly butt. No. Okay, so I have my paper laid out. I have a few different types of rulers my long ruler, and you will need a tape measure. So with your measurements, I'm gonna start by doing the back panel because I feel like that will be probably the easiest. So the length I said I wanted, maybe five, so that will be about here side. So I'm just gonna draw basically a straight line and my nine because this will be on the fold so again I just need to do the half but your neck obviously it has to round around your shoulder so I'm just gonna make a kind of rounded marking and then for most shoulder panels obviously like your shoulder slopes so you just need to connect here basically to the page and I just make a little bit of a slope, not much. I wish I knew where my protractor was. If you wanna get this measurement accurate to fit you, if this isn't clear, just go and take a shirt that fits you well, fold it in kind of half, half the neck, like where your spine is, to your shoulder, and then the shoulder where the shoulder stops. Just trace that out up at the top, and that will give you your perfect measurement. So basically it's going to be almost the exact same, but it's going to be a bit, just a tiny bit lower because of the neckline. Just a little bit higher. I went about two and a half inches higher. So start there. I'm gonna go all the way down. You can see I kind of curved out just a little bit. This right here 
is nine and we curved out a bit here. So that's about 10. So I'm gonna do the same thing to this one. And then we go to nine, just there. And then it's gonna go down and I'm gonna like let it connect to the bottom. So I just put it at an angle and then basically that's that. So whatever your piece of your back is here, you wanna make it almost half smaller on this side. So these two will connect five inches. So this one, I'm gonna do just about three and a half inches. Then I just wanna connect these two, um, just with a little bit of a slope, not really much of one. So I'm just gonna use this guy. Again, if you want perfect for this top, find a shirt that fits you well and then just measure half of the front for the top. I'm going to need two pieces for this because it's going to be wider and longer than this. So I'm going to start, because I'm going to probably tape it up here. So I'll have the bottom out this way and then I'll have it come up with the rounded shoulder on this side here. So my, what I'm going to do, basically, you get your measurement of your shoulder blade to your, just below your collar bone. And I just kind of like curve it out like that. So that's basically gonna be what like your top looks like. You can kind of trace that around so it's nice and smooth. You want one side to be a little bit more slopey and one to be a little bit more rounded because that's gonna be the front side. And obviously that kind of curves up because of your bust where the back will just go more flat. What is that measurement width? So eight again. So if I did eight and I want it to go down, let's see. I don't wanna to waste too much paper. So let's pretend to start it like here. So that's one length of the ruler, but I actually want it longer than the ruler. So let's just go, yeah, we'll just go like here. 28 inches long. All right, so 14, it's gonna be 14 inches. This one will be 14 and then it will add the rest on the second one. We'll make it four inches shorter. So that's gonna be like that long. That's not the shape I want. I just wanna make sure I know where I have to connect it to. So now that I want that kind of swoopy shape, where's that? I'm going to, let's see. Let's make it like that kind of swoop. Nope, no, that's way too much of a swoop. I need to connect it to here. Where's it? Yeah, that curves, so then if I can just somehow And then you're gonna need it to come out, will come down, I guess. And you need to make the top of this. So you measure this amount, so that's 18. So this is 14, so I need to make this basically 19 inches tall. I think that's going to be too long. Do 17 inches. Okay, so basically this line now has to connect to this bottom line. So I'm going to just do a little bit of a swoop because it's your back shoulder. So like this one is perfect because it kind of has a swoop on the top. basically just has to have a swoop ish kind of like that we're gonna go on the outside down and then it's gonna have to connect so I do this like that and then you're just gonna want to make that more of like a seamless line 
There we go. So now this, I basically cut this out, cut this out, cut those two out. This one I take to this one, and now I can cut the fabric. So now I'm going to get some chalk and I'm going to trace these patterns out onto my fabric, cut that up and start assembling. Okay, so all the pieces are cut out. You should have a back panel two front panels and four sleeves. It's actually already starting to look really cool. I think it might turn out well. If you are lining this, you have to cut out all eight pieces again with your lining and assemble that just like you did that and then you'll be attaching it together later. So yeah, I'm gonna get started on pitting this, try it on and see how it fits. Everything is pinned together. I'm going to try it on very carefully. Stand up on the stair. See, it's not as long as I wanted it to be, but it is pretty long. Shit! I actually did it. Damn it, I dropped a pin. So now, I'm going to sew everything together. I'm going to unpin it. Well, unpin sections of it. I'm going to sew the front to the front arm, and then both back arms to the back piece, the front to the front arm, and then I will attach both arms at the very end. That is how I'm going to do it. Cozy sweater time. Hi, monkey. You just gonna sit on my arm while I'm talking? That's okay. That works. So I got a lot of sewing done last night. Doesn't seem like I got a lot done, but I got a lot done. I finished the outer shell of the coat. I finished the lining and I did all the seams. I searched all the seams, which was like butter. So today I'm going to show you how to do the collar pieces, make the secret pocket. Then I'm going to insert the secret pocket into the lining, attach the collar, attach everything together and sew it. Then you flip it inside out, press everything down, and that's when I do the arm slits. On some capes, I've seen them actually just right along the seam line, but I feel like that's too centered, so I kind of want them more in the cape part sleeves. So I'm just going to make it on the other side of the seam line and I'm gonna have to see where exactly I want them once I put it on. I still don't know what I'm gonna do for closing and closure of the cape. It could be a clasp, it might be buttons, it might be a combination of both. It's one of those things that I don't think I'm gonna really know what I want until I put it on and then I can see it. So that's gonna be a game time decision. So I'm gonna show you guys what I've done so far and then get working on cutting out all the little pieces. You're a wizard, Harry. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> so my process was I took a large sheet of paper and I folded it in half. I put the folded edge directly in the center of the cape with the rest out this way. From the folded edge, I traced along this line. 
which should be exactly equal to that. You'll have to double check whenever you can move the paper, but that's how I got the measurement for the collar. And again, it's on folded paper. So whenever you cut that out, you'll have two equal measurements on both sides. And then I wanted my collar six inches in length. So I just took my ruler and I used basically the corner of this because it's a perfect 90 degree angle. So I placed it in the very corner so it was exactly even. And then I just traced down six inches. Then moving forward, I just went all along the edge and then I'd make a tick every so often following around the edge, six inches. And then basically I just connected the dots and it came all along here up to the folded edge. So when you're finished that, you take that pattern, cut it out, put it on your fabric on the fold and you should cut out a piece similar to this. So you actually need two of these for the top and the bottom. And then I cut out interfacing each for the top and the bottom. So you need two interfacing and two collar pieces. So now what I'm going to do is press on the interfacing to the lining of the top and the bottom. And the widest edge is your bottom. So you wanna make sure you have a top and a bottom and that these two are on the outside of both. Now with your collar, with both sides together, you're going to stitch all along the edge, all around, leaving one side, the top side open. Clip all your edges and clip close to the seam. Make sure you're clipping the corners on an angle so they fold over smoothly. Then flip it all over. Once you do that, just top stitch the outside to give it a nice decorative edge. And then we're going to be pinning it to the cape. Hello. All right, I guess I'll just work around you. Let's cut off some of these fraying things. This very well could be a tablecloth too, to be honest. I have no idea. It has like scalloped edges. I think 10 inches long will be a good number. Let's see if I can cut this in half. Will that be 10? Oh my God. It's 10. It's 10 exactly. It feels too good to be true. So I've laid out the cape and these are where my armholes are going to be. So what I did, I cut out two pieces of interfacing and then I measured 19 inches from the bottom to the top and that's where they both start. And there's a one inch gap between the seams. So basically the very center of this is where the slit's going to be. And then I took pins and I pinned it through the front layer and the interfacing, but not the bottom layer, just the two top layers, just makes an outline of where those boxes are. So you can also see it from the underside. So from the other side, you could see where the pins are. So then you would lay your interfacing on the inside, just match those up, press it down, do that again for the other side, and then we'll start on the pockets. Okay, so I've started off with one side. So you take two of your strips. This is basically the outline of the panel on the inside. So if I flip this over, you can see there's my interfacing. So right in the middle of that, this is three inches wide, I put a line down the center. These two lines equal all of this space is one inch. So this is half an inch and half an inch. 
with your strips, you fold them all in half and iron them down. Then you put your strips over. And basically when you do that, there's the slash line and there's your one inch space. Then you're going to be sewing down, starting at this crosshair, all the way down to this crosshair. You have to make sure you don't go past that line at all. It has to stop at that line exactly. Then you do the other side, down this side, start at this crosshair, all the way down to here. So I'm gonna go do that, and then I'll show you the next step. Now that you've finished sewing, it should look something like that, with still one inch between both chalk lines, and the folded edges are both on the outside here, and the cut edges are the, on the inside. And when you open it up, you can see your center chalk line. So what you wanna do now is flip it over, and you'll see the back looks like this. Both end at the exact same point on the top and the bottom. Make sure you clip these threads. So what you're going to do now is you can make a line if it's easier. You're gonna cut directly down the center. But when you get about a half an inch from the bottom, cut diagonally towards each side so you have almost a bit of a triangle shape here on the top and the bottom. So I'm gonna do that now and I'll show you what I mean. Also when you're cutting, make sure you're getting through all three layers of fabric. So you have your lining, you have your outer layer, and then you also have this interfacing. But just make sure you don't clip your wells either. So this is what it will look like whenever you finish cutting. It has a little bit of a flap here. As you can see, I didn't go anywhere past the final stitch on either top or the bottom. So now what you have to do is flip it the other way and you're going to turn everything inside out this way from the outside and then press everything down. So I will do that and show you what it looks like. And there it is pressed and finished. So I'm going to do a stitch in the ditch, which is basically just stitching all in this little indent all the way around the pocket. Well, I guess armhole. So that just enforces that they stay and there's no movement. The back doesn't look that great. Once it's sewn in, it'll be better. But what I think I'm going to do is roll all this in and then I'm going to slip stitch it all the way around. So I'm gonna go stitch this up. I'm gonna do the other slit and then I'm going to have a reveal. dress form so it's just going to be sitting on a chair for now. I'm really happy with the way it turned out. I think it looks really great. It looks very finished. I'm just really happy with my pattern. I don't know if it's because my skills are getting better from sewing for a few months or if it was just a beginner project and for this pattern something just clicked. I have no idea but thank you sewing gods. It actually turned out really well and I'm so excited to wear this. The double welted, welted, arm slits actually turned out so nice. On the inside, they are all finished. So you can see it just looks a lot cleaner. I rolled it under and then I just slip stitched it all to the lining and it looks very finished. For the enclosure, I just set in these little hooks. For the other side, I looped around a bunch of thread and then I wrapped more thread around it to make it really strong and durable. So now that just clips in there. And there is one here and one up here. This clip can die in a fire. It's not even a clip, it's not a clasp. I don't know what it is. I have no idea what it was on before, if it was a necklace or what, but it literally has no purpose other than to annoy me. 
there is nothing on the back to sew it to or nothing like to hook into. It's metal, so like I, I literally don't know what purpose this had. So what I did was take hot glue and I put a little metal ring into it on the very back, let that harden. It's metal, so it fell off a couple times, so I don't know how sturdy this is actually going to be, but for now, it stayed up. And then I took another ring, opened it up, put that through. I did a little stitch up here to have something to connect it to, and then I closed up the ring. So this can't come off, which is so inconvenient. I have to like put it on, take it off like this. It is purely on here for the reveal, for the finished product. I am going to be changing that clip to something I can actually use. So when I do find a new clasp, I will post a picture of what it looks like at the end. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a like and I hope you subscribe. If you followed along and made your own cape or if you've made one previously from another pattern, I would love to see your work. I absolutely love capes. So tag me on Instagram. Let me know in the comments below. If you have any questions at all about this tutorial, let me know in the comments or ask me on Instagram. I would be happy to answer any kind of questions you guys have. Thank you again for watching. I put out new sewing videos every Monday and craft videos every other Friday. So I will see you guys in my next video. Jesus. How long were you there? The clip, the clip, the clip. <laughs>